Welcome back to the Garden Hutch. Today we discuss week 29 of 2022. Let's get going. Well, week 29 was comparable to the four or five weeks before that. Um, little to no rain, um, the real temperature over 100 degrees every single day last week with the feels like, the feels like got into like 115 territory. So everybody's in these advisories. It's difficult to be outside after like 10.30 or 11. Um, again, so what we've been doing, we just, I know I say it every week, we just wake up super early in the morning and we end up uh, watering for you know five six hours uh, then we try to get all of our trimming done making sure that we have plenty of fertilizer that sort of thing um, everything's doing pretty well we're going to take a little tour here um, the thing that i've been doing most during week 29 though is sort of preparing for the fall um, and, and we'll kind of get into more of the reasons as we go but the reason for that is a lot of times a lot of our determinant varieties of our vegetables <laughs> are coming to the end of their cycle. So we had all of the early crookneck squash that we had early. We've gone ahead and pulled all them, although we didn't get a whole lot out of them late because of the, the temperatures, but we did early get a boat ton of squash. Um, our tomatoes have been doing really good. Um, the cucumbers, as you see behind me, they've been doing really good as well. But the, the thing with the cucumbers is they're starting to sort of trend towards the end of their life cycle. We should have about another two to three weeks of them so I'm, I'll kind of show you what I'm thinking about in the fall. We wouldn't mind getting like another round if possible, uh, getting like a, a smaller round of uh, pickling cucumbers uh, going into, uh, you know, like the early August all the way. Hopefully we can get it through, you know, start getting cucumbers middle of August and have them through the end of September just to um, either give them away. I'm not sure how much room we're gonna have in the refrigerator because we are just filling that guy up super fast. So um, I think that's about it for the intro. Uh, I think I've probably rambled enough. So let's go take a look at these gardens and I'll show you what, uh, a little bit more of what we're talking about. So as we had mentioned, um, we do water uh, just the rosemary here because you know we wanna make sure that it stays alive. But through here, this mint and all of this stuff, that stuff is drought tolerant. So the roots underneath of it, they, you know, they're gonna come back regardless. So we've kind of stopped watering this whole front row. I do once a week come down here and I will um, water our honeysuckle down there just to make sure, you know, we put in a lot of effort just to get our first flowers this year. So we wanna make sure that we kind of keep that um, alive. So said it before, but uh, that dude is a jerk. So, but I'll show you real fast how our, um, our summer squashes and our cucumbers are doing. I'm sorry, our winter squashes and cucumbers. They have kind of started making a bit of a comeback. We had a whole uh, round of butternut squashes that we got earlier. Um, and now they're kind of starting to put off again. I'm not real sure what the trigger for all of these new flowers are. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm glad that we have them. I'll show you another thing we've been fighting. You see these guys right there? Those little squash bugs. Here's what I do. I take them and smash them like that. Um, but we have been battling and battling and battling those squash bugs. You can see on here, um, you get squash bugs. And then we've also had a lot of the squash bugs and a lot of grasshoppers through this heat. So. The trauma to the plants is starting to take a bit of a toll on the plants. I'm sure uh, when I go back and look at it when the season is over, it has probably taken a toll on me as well. It's it's a bit demoralizing putting all this effort into it. Um, you know, and, and again, I do think it's going to pay off. I think that we'll be able to ha continue harvesting um, into this uh, into next week, week 30. Hopefully, we will have better news than what we have had on the front of weather. We're supposed to get uh, down into low 90s, upper 80s with the evenings in the upper 60s. And we have a uh, better than average chance of rain. So that's gonna help out tremendously. Uh, you can see what I'm talking about a little bit here, um, these guys. But overall, I'm very pleased, you know, whenever I'm able to compare our gardens with other people's gardens, it looks like we're doing 
pretty well overall. I just, it's just not what I wanted whenever the season started, you know. We all have these grandiose ideas for our gardens and then, you know, whenever the time comes, sometimes they're not, they don't pay off quite as much. But you can see the sweet potatoes, they're still doing really well. Um, I went through and we're making sure that they get ample water. Uh, I'm not really familiar with growing them. This is the first year. So I don't have a whole lot of knowledge as far as what happens during the um you know droughts and summers and stuff but um our garden cat oscar what's up buddy this is the new addition garden cat he literally follows us everywhere we've had to let him inside during the middle parts of the day you know once he gets over 95 or so we bring all the animals inside um and oscar will be a permanent outside cat he does get to come in though whenever it's super hot like this but you know we had mentioned before about our potatoes in these buckets and we're hoping that these do well uh, we are going to dig out the potatoes after if we get some rain we are going to dig out the potatoes up there the reason for that is the ground right now is just super hard even though we've been watering regularly the ground is really hard and difficult to pull up and I was traumatizing the potatoes so hopefully starting Thursday of week 30 we start getting more and more uh, rain and as such it'll make the ground softer and that kind of thing but one last thing I wanted to point out we talked about the compost and the fact that we're not flipping it be due to the water restrictions and stuff at this point but <coughs> excuse me um, I did want to point out we do have just a bit of our leaf litter left in our leaf bin that we fill up over the fall after this rain I will take the what's left in here so we've been using this periodically as we put in our summer plants but what I'm gonna do is I'll finish this off and put it around the corn uh, the corn is tall enough I've tried to put in a couple seeds where we had some blank spots they didn't come up so and so I'm tired of waiting for it to be completely honest and I feel like we'll save a lot more water and the plants will be better overall if we um, go ahead and cover the dirt and start recycling the water I'm sorry and start conserving the water in there um, as mentioned we did you want your stick boo um, as mentioned we pulled out the um, early crookneck yellow squash that we had down here and then so essentially all that's in this bed down here right now are the eggplants at the end and they're not doing exceptional either and i think that is a combination of the excessive heat drought and the fact that for some reason i did not account for this trellis blocking as much sun as it has blocked this year so our eggplants are coming off small uh, last year they were massive and beautiful so what we'll probably end up doing is next year we'll take these eggplants and we'll put them in that top garden probably plant them in with our peppers here's another of those potato buckets that we've planted and we've tried to make sure they get plenty of water but it's so difficult keeping anything with a lot of water right now considering the overall temperature um, the fig tree is doing pretty well we're not getting a lot of figs our the fruit has fallen off of most of our fruit trees even though that I've tried to water them every other week I just don't think I was giving them enough water. I also think that this heat is just not uh, great for having fruit. So the only thing is two of our apple trees do have apples on them. So maybe we'll get some of those. We're gonna find out, I guess, huh? As we can walking up here towards the top garden, I just wanted to sort of point out our pollinator flowers, they're doing okay. But again, the sun has just taken a toll on them as well. Um, you know, they, they periodically throughout the day they'll come up and they'll bloom and then they dry out really fast. They don't seem to hang around for the pollinators like I remember them doing last year, but I think all, most of us are having a lot of these issues. And this loofah up here, everything is getting, you know, sun scorched and then it's getting attacked by grasshoppers and such. Now we are able to cover some of our raised beds as they need them. The problem is we have these little side beds, you know, the secondary and tertiary beds and such. And so those we did not build with the idea of covering them because we, you know, we didn't anticipate needing them. Um, but that's something that we'll need to rectify going forward. But as you can see through here, this purple hole bed right through here, it's already, it's pretty much done. We left it in just in case because 
the big garden down there, we still, we have the larger rows of the purple holes down there. So this is gonna be the last week to pick them. This Saturday, uh, we'll pick them and hopefully we get another five gallon bucket, which is what we got this week and the week before. So we're putting up a lot of purple hole peas. My goal for this bed is we'll go through and let's see if we can get down here and I can show you. Well, it's a little, we'll go through and we'll take all of these out with scissors, all of these plants, and we'll leave the roots of the plants in the ground and then we'll cover them uh, with compost. I'll probably wait until these beans are done here to cover them with compost. Because as I mentioned earlier, we are starting to get into that phase of the year where we transition from our summer vegetables and then start prepping for our fall vegetables, um, especially in the determinate variety. You know, So like green beans and peas and those things, those are determinate vegetables. They put off a certain amount and then the, the plants themselves just kind of die out and you know they've run their cycle. So what we're gonna end up doing is we'll go ahead and we'll add our two inches of compost into this and we'll turn this into a carrot bed. Um, the four by fours were fantastic for the carrots, but we just eat so many of them. We want to try to do them in a bit more room. So that's what's going to go here. And then over here, we haven't quite decided. I, I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth between doing this bed here and either cabbages again. Uh, you know, anybody who watched the channel in the early spring knows we did get cabbages. We had to pull them earlier than we wanted because they had some um, fungus on the outside leaves. But I'm hoping this year that uh, we got, or I'm sorry, in the fall, we got a different variety that is supposed to be uh, naturally resistant to that type of thing. So we're going to give that a shot again, I think. And if not, then what we might do is grow beets in here. The reason I say might is because our plan is if the buckets in the potatoes we saw earlier, if those are prolific, you know, and we can grow, say, maybe 10 buckets of potatoes and we can get 20 pounds of potatoes from each bucket, you know, that would be sufficient for us. And then what we could do is we could take this area that we're growing our potatoes in now and we could put in one to two large beds and I haven't decided yet, but I thought about doing this entire area down here in carrots and then maybe cutting off halfway through this bed here and then you know building another raised bed that'll come along this area through here um, and having and doing that one also in a raised bed, but growing our beets there. And what that would do was that will free up our pallet bed up there so that we could do more of our leafy greens and we could do uh, we could try a few other things like i wouldn't mind trying some kohlrabi that sort of stuff and those are also cooler wedge uh cooler weather vegetables apparently i got tongue tied on that uh, um, those squash now those are more of your traditional summer squashes so they're not the early varieties i'm not sure what to expect because we started them I waited to put them in the ground because I was hoping we would get a break in the temperatures, which we're not getting until the end of next week. But I went ahead and put them in the ground. We lost one almost immediately. Um, and, you know, the grasshoppers, I came out and it was just stems. Um, so anyway, the grasshoppers got a hold of it. But so far, the other ones are holding in well. We haven't got a lot of uh, blooms or anything on them. But what I'm hoping is that um, the winter squash over there getting its blooms and getting new female flowers on it is sort of a harbinger for uh, what we're going to get out of these guys over here. So uh, I had mentioned before about our romas. You can see we're not getting any new um, flowers or anything on top of these. We've done really well with keeping hornworms and stuff off of them. But usually right around the 1st of August, all of your determinate variety of tomatoes should be done. So in the greenhouse, we have a whole nother round of these romas. They put off a whole bunch this year. We got a freezer almost full of them already. So. I've started them and in that bed, um, that's where we're gonna put the next round of Roma tomatoes. And I'm hoping that we can, you know, even if we don't get a full cycle of Romas, you know, and we hit the uh, frost date before we get the entire cycle, just having a little bumper crop at the end to polish off the freezer or to uh, have some fresh tomatoes at that time of the year will be fantastic. Uh, we have also tied up our beefsteak tomatoes and we are getting new flowers on them and smaller tomatoes. What I'm hoping is this change in the weather will kind of um, kickstart the top part growth and then I can bring in some taller bamboo stakes and put them in the middle. And then maybe we can get a whole nother round of flowers off of the beef stakes. That would be phenomenal. I think I addressed 
the grass growing over here in our last video but in the middle of the week we did a picking the garden video to sort of show everybody what we're getting during our pickings for the summer and I'll put a link of that here uh, on the top but we also explained through there you can tell some of this some of these grass through here they're like uh, you know ankle to mid calf tall and the reason we did that was we are losing a lot of water to the heat so what we've done is we've allowed the grass to kind of grow up so that we have a spot in here for our chickens to be able to go they love going through the grass and eating the seeds out of it and whatever bugs survive in there and that sort of stuff and to be honest this is obviously right now this is the only spot in our yard that has a whole lot of life we have birds that love to come through here <laughs> oscar over there in the roses we uh but we have birds that'll come through and drink out of the water fountain periodically um and um anyway so this area right now has really paid off but with the rain coming into this week i am going to go ahead and mow um the first part of week 30. so hopefully we can get through that part of it uh, we've shown this before but my first year growing watermelons look at this Let's see how that it's just getting all dried up and, and I don't know if that's normal for watermelons, but I go through and trim this a lot. And the watermelons themselves, the plants are doing well. Our fruit is coming along, but some of these leaves, you know, no matter what I do, I come out, they'll be chewed up and just crispy and dying. So I guess as long as the watermelons are going good, next year they'll have their own bed and maybe I can uh, isolate the cause of those a little better that way. But uh, we went through and we pulled, I can't even tell you how many peppers. We had enough to do, I think a gallon and a half of pickled peppers uh, and we gave bags of them away. So again, these guys, um, and I don't know, we'll find out next year because we'll grow them obviously, but I don't know if it's the excessive heat that has kickstarted the peppers. Whatever it is though, we have had an awesome pepper year. We were talking about the, um, the corn and I tried to get right there, you can see this little bare spot in the middle of this one. Um, and I tried to get an extra piece to come up in there and it just simply never came up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, um, as soon as I'm done with this video, actually, I'll probably just go ahead and get the rest of that leaf litter from the leaf bin and just uh, pile it up about a half an inch to an inch on the bottom of this so that we can start uh, keeping a bit more of the water. But the corn is looking good. Uh, we are spraying it uh, consistently. I've never really grown corn, so I'm not sure if it's even worth the time, but uh, because we are going to be replenishing all of these beds uh, in the fall of this year, we decided to go ahead and give it a try to see if it's something we want to grow or if we just want to keep buying it from other farmers. So it's kind of nice to grow your own stuff, but sometimes depending on the room, um, you know, it might be better just to invest a little bit of extra money, buy, you know, 40, 50 head, or ears of corn and put those in the freezer for Leslie and I. But you can tell these cayenne peppers are just kicking it. They have gotten a lot of them on there. Uh, the kale is still doing well. We had an infestation on it again. It's been like four times this year that our kale has just been attacked. Again, I believe that's because of the drought and you know a lot of the lack of food for other animals and bugs and that sort of stuff. Our Swiss chard is coming along nicely. This one down here, uh, it hasn't gotten big, but the small leaves on this are the best in a salad. So maybe the small tender part of it, I'm not sure, but we're loving everything about it. Um, and then the Swiss chard we put up here in the cast iron, it's doing well. Um, we have just now started to take some of the smaller leaves for salads. They're really good. This parsley, we grew it because it came in a seed packet that we had. I really don't use parsley for anything. Um, I like it. I've had a few friends take some of it home with them. I don't know if I'll grow it again next year or not though, to be honest with you. So we'll have to wait and find out. Um, over here, you can see our, look at these guys. Um, we had two nights this past week that were in the low 70s and they just exploded with these little clusters. And so it's, you know, essentially those will end up looking like these guys do uh, you can see i need to take out part of these these are the older leaves from the second round but we're going through we're getting i don't know about two gallons or so of cherry tomatoes every two to three days and let's go see you can tell in here um, our aromas have started to come up they've been in here for about i don't know 
uh, five or six days. So the important part is, especially with the heat being what it is, are you two playing over there? Leave that poor kitty alone, boo. Um, you can see over here, the, the trick is, is to make sure that these don't dry out and that they're not too hot. So what I like to do is, I keep an eye on the temperature throughout the course of a day and I'll just come out, you know, and um, put the water on these guys. Um, I water them in the mornings and I'll probably water them around two or three. But once it starts hitting that 100 degree mark, um, I'll come out and if they're looking too bad or if I think they're in danger, what I'll do is I'll just take them inside and I'll sit them in a window until, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock and then I'll bring them back out into the greenhouse. Well, we're gonna wrap today's video up here. Um, I would like to just add a few things here. I, I do recommend going ahead and start to plan your fall garden now. In the fall, we like to plant things like beets, turnips, carrots. Uh, you can put in a late round of potatoes if you want. Um, lettuces. You can try to plant some more uh, kale or chard. They're, they're a little bit better in the uh, heat of the summer. But if you put them in now, you could probably end up getting a pretty good crop. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we're going to plan this year. I'll put them all in the next video if there's anything I forgot. But what I would like, the reason I bring this up is it's a good time to go ahead and start grabbing your seeds now. Uh, who knows what the future is going to hold from a weather standpoint, but a lot of people ended up having their gardens burn up because the entire U.S., I mean, no matter where you live, the entire U.S. has been under weeks and weeks of strain from heat and drought, that sort of stuff. And so in my head, what I'm thinking is, is that if it turns off nice, you know, say, I don't know, middle of August or so, it takes a turn to where it cools off, you know, and we get like an early fall type thing. I have a feeling there's gonna be people who are gonna to try to compensate the lack of vegetables there at the end of the year. And so what you don't wanna do, you don't wanna find yourself in a spot where you're short on compost or you're short on seeds and you and your family would like some extra food to eat. So just throwing that out there. Um, another thing is make sure that you are watering your pets and I, and I noticed this because I went back and I watched uh, the last few videos that I did and I constantly tell people to make sure you're hydrating make sure we water our gardens uh, we were talking to our neighbor the other day and he was telling me that um, his chickens ended up somehow getting a hole in their water bowl um, and they were at home for like two and a half hours and he keeps his cooped up and they were in there for like two and a half hours with no water and he was really surprised that he didn't lose any. Anyway, him saying that, it just got me thinking, you know, that's not something that I really uh, throw out here on the channel a lot, you know, watering your pets and that sort of thing. So just make sure that we're keeping ourselves cool, we're keeping our plants cool and our pets cooled and watered. Um, also, you know, if you have livestock, chickens, goats, pigs, cows, any of that sort of thing, you know, they're going through the same thing the rest of us are. Um, and the last thing that I do wanna say is we are gonna try to film the big garden here in a couple weeks. Um, I have some ideas that I've been bouncing around. Anybody who watches the channel knows that I, I like to bounce ideas around for a few months before I actually implement them. So we're hoping that maybe if everything works out well, that instead of doing raised beds in the big garden, we can kind of do something a little different. Um, I can shape it up and just use like in-ground beds because the purple hole peas down there are doing fantastic. And I think from now on, we'd like to grow that many purple holes. We're gonna see how they last through the fall and such, but if they do as well, if they last as long as what we think they're going to, um, it's gonna be a, a really good addition to the homestead. With that being said, I would like to say thank you to all you folks who have made it here to the end. We do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. If you have not, please subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way in helping us reach our goals and it's free for you. Until next time, I hope that all you folks take care of yourselves, stay cool and hydrated.